what's up guys sam shah here founder of wall street mastermind i'm excited to be back with another client interview for you guys today today i'm excited to have samantha on with us uh samantha is uh, uh one of our students that we've actually been working with for uh <clears throat> for a while um i guess you joined i want to say early june of last year and so you know it's been just about 10 months now actually um and so Anyway, Samantha's been with us for a while and uh, just finished going through uh, her recruiting process uh, for her summer internship, I think about a month ago now, right? Um, and so I just, you know, she was able to get a, a very a successful outcome uh, with the Bulge Backup offer. And so I just wanted to get her to come on here and uh, talk about kind of <clears throat> her journey of going through recruiting and what that was like and, uh, you know, how she was able to get to the successful outcome despite coming from a non-target school. So um, I'm sure a lot of you will hopefully find this to be useful uh, as you go through your own process as well. And so Samantha, I wanna, first of all, thank you for taking the time to be here with us today. And uh, if you don't mind, um, just briefly introducing yourself real quick so that our audience knows who they're listening to, and then uh, we'll dive right into some questions. <clears throat> awesome, thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate you having me here. Um, just for some context about myself, um, I'm actually currently a sophomore, like Sam mentioned, just finished up my recruiting process and uh, joined the program a while ago. Um, when I came into college, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and sort of uh, knew it was going to be something broadly within business. But when I met some of my mentors at my school, I was able to see that a lot of people kind of went into banking or consulting and was sort of on the fence between those two buckets um, and ultimately decided that banking was a better fit for me and, and that it was something that I wanted to go to into but was pretty shocked to hear how early that process sort of kicks off. Um, and so I knew that there, I needed to be really proactive and sort of take the reins, especially being at a non-target school and quickly realizing that, um, you know, my alumni base was a lot smaller than than people at target schools. And, you know, yeah. my parents, neither of them are in finance and, and they're both immigrants. So they hadn't really gone through the recruiting process here in America and didn't really have, um, you know, the, the proper advice to give kind of uh, solely from them. So I knew that I needed to seek external help help and, and came across Sam's program. Um, so I think it was an Instagram advertisement of all things. Um, so, so went through that, um, was able to set up a call with Sam and, and talk about his program. And then sort of throughout, um, you know, the, the summer before I was able to commit to the program, I, um, you know, had thought, maybe I can do this on my own. Maybe I can just, you know, go through different PDFs and sort of um, navigate this individually, but then realized that with how quick the process moves, I, I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything I could to be on top of things and address everything the right way when it came. So joined the program and, and have really appreciated the support since then, um, had a really smooth recruiting process as a result of that. And, and yeah, happy to get into more questions you have. Awesome. Um, that's a great overview. So I guess, um, you know, like we mentioned, you know, you, you ended up at a bulge bracket bank, um, which like, was that kind of the outcome that you were expecting or um, was that the exceed expect expectations or kind of like, how did it feel after you got your offer or like, what, like, what was the first thing you did when you got it, I guess? <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, it feels great to be, you know, first of all, a little bit of relief just being done with the process, but also just a lot of gratitude, um, you know, really happy to have had this, you know, gotten this opportunity. Um, but I think that, you know, throughout the process, I had really high expectations for myself. And I think that, you know, I never had my eyes set on one place in particular, you know, the process sort of rolls out um, naturally, and you kind of end up in, in a place that I think is a really good fit for you where, you, where you're meant to be, and you're, you know, everyone's going to make the best of what they get. Yeah. Um, but I think that, um, you know, throughout the program, especially with Sam's support, you know, everyone's lifting you up. And so you're, you're never kind of told to lower your expectations, or, you know, you're never told to, um, you know, have a negative outlook on it. So I think for me, it was always like, the sky's the limit. And, you know, I'm happy with where I am and, and happy to, you know, excited for next summer. So, yeah. What did your parents say when you uh, told them about it? Yeah, they were really excited and, and just happy also that I was done with the process and could finally like sleep more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's funny. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I know all the parents, every time they, um, hear about banking, they're always like asking, cause are you sure you want to do this? Like, <laughs> why, like, why do you want to work so much? And mm -hmm. like, it's just like this total form of <laughs> parents. Totally. Um, so going back to like something you said earlier, um, obviously the summary before you committed to the program, mm -hmm. you knew about us, but then you decided like, Hey, let me just try to do this on my own. Right. So yeah. 
that's like a I think pretty um normal reaction that I think a lot of people have, right? Mm -hmm. Uh because you know, why spend the money if you don't have to spend the money, right? So mm -hmm. like what were some of the things that you were already doing on your own prior to joining our program? Like what were the resources totally. that you were using and like just kind of describe what that was like for us? Totally. Yeah. I think um throughout that time, that window between when I talked to Sam for the first time and then when I decided to join the program, I spent a lot of time cold LinkedIn messaging people and kind of hearing about their experiences, sort of collecting data points on what people's uh, recruiting experiences have been like. And also just observing, you know, what other people, you know, my friends who are at target schools, what they were going through. And I think what I found is that a lot of people seem to have um, points of contact that they could return to who are always sort of open to answer questions and whatnot. And, and like I mentioned with my parents, not being within the finance space and, um, you know, being at a non-target school and having less data points there as well. I knew that I needed that someone to sort of yeah. lead on and, 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 you know, resources to be able to access um, consistently as things popped up. And so um, for me, I think, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have awesome mentors at my school that have been so instrumental as well in the process, but I think it was really just access to information that I really wanted as well. Like and Sam told me about his modules, which are really, really helpful and the Slack channel and, and a lot of other aspects of the program that I thought would really help me. And when I thought I could do it by my Myself, the turning point was a little bit when um, you know I started seeing how early things were kicking off, whether that was like diversity program interviews or just you know broad applications for off cycle internships opening. Um, I was just shocked to see that after finishing my first year of college, like I was already being thrown into the process, and I was thinking to myself that you know this process, like once that boat sails, if if you haven't um, kind of gotten on it, then it's really hard to break in. And so I figured that. Um, I wanted to do it right the first time and really kind of make sure I had everything I needed going into it, um, you know, instead of kind of backtracking once it was too late. Yeah, gotcha. That's um, that, that's really interesting because I think, I mean, first of all, let's just say it's the recruiting timeline keeps happening earlier and earlier every year, right? Which is, I would say, unfortunate because, um, you know, it just doesn't really give students a lot of time to prepare um, I'm old, but like back when, <laughs> back when I had to recruit, you know, 15 to 20 years ago, we didn't really have to recruit for our junior summer internship mm -hmm. until probably like the second half of our junior year. So imagine that, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then every year it's just crept up earlier and earlier to the point mm -hmm. now where it's, you know, about halfway through sophomore year. And then I'm sure if we fast forward another five years from where we are today, we'll probably be, you know, beginning of sophomore year or Mm -hmm. second semester freshman year who knows right and so things just keep getting harder um but i think that a lot of people still i mean there's just i don't know like it's it's hard for college students who just started college and who are maybe like one year into school you know just starting to feel like they're settled to even realize just how much urgency there is behind this timeline right and so i think like for you like you had the um, foresight to realize like hey this is really urgent and like if I don't do well on like summer internship recruiting then it's going to make everything a lot harder and then like right. that obviously is like the right way to think about it but we also see so many students who think differently where they're like oh well like I'm only a freshman so I still have plenty of time right or like a lot of people <laughs> even like mistakenly think like oh, I don't have to worry about like getting a job until I'm like my last year in college just like by then it's obviously like way too late Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think like that, that, that's like the first big key takeaway I would say that people need to have is just like, just how early things happen in banking, recruiting, which is not normal, by the way, because like most other industries don't recruit this way. But for whatever reason for investment banking, they just the banks recruit super early. And so like, if you're asleep at the wheel, then like by the time you re even realize there's something you want to do, there's so many people, you, you won't believe how many people come to us like, really late and I'm like oh like I just recently discovered I want to do banking like can you still help me right <laughs> um, and sometimes it's like no sorry it's too late and then sometimes it's like yeah we can still help you but like given how late it is you can probably only get into like a regional boutique or something like that because all the big banks are done hiring already right and then like maybe they're okay with that maybe they're not but obviously like the the quality of that offer is significantly worse than what you could have gotten otherwise right, right. Um, so I think that's a really, uh, really, really good point that you bring up there. Um, so I think um, the the other the next question that I want to kind of segue to is, um, it sounds like, because this is another common question that I think a lot of our uh, audience has, or that we get a lot at least, which is, 
obviously, like you mentioned, you know, you have a lot of like mentors at school who are really awesome and who are already helping you. Um, presumably, I think like probably upperclassmen that have already gone through recruiting maybe a year or two before you, or like maybe people that you're like, I don't know, in certain finance or investment clubs with, like that's usually the profile, right? Mm -hmm. So like what made you like, what? Well, why not just do that? Like, why not just keep doing what, what you were already doing? Like what made you want to join Wall Street Mastermind, especially considering, you know, there was a fee and you did have to pay for this. Whereas like just working with the upperclassmen at school or in your club or whatever, that's technically free, right? I mean, it's not free. You're paying for school, but like it's already included in what with the tuition that you're paying and whatever, right? So like why go and get even more help, I guess? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think to preface, like you mentioned, those mentors have been really instrumental in my in my journey as well. Um, and they've been amazing, phenomenal resources. But I think that, you know, they're students too. They've gone through their process, but they have a lot of respons responsibilities on their plate as well. And so um, when it comes to all the little things that come up throughout the process, you know, what, super trivial questions to, you know, reviewing a cover letter or something even more important than that, I think that I wanted, um, you know, more of a resource to be able to be there at all times and really not feel bad about reaching out and being able to ask those last minute questions too. Um, mm -hmm. But I think beyond that, it was more about the the prep materials that really drew me to the program. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, Sam has awesome modules that he provides. And I think that's a really big part of the program and a big mm -hmm. part of why I joined um, because I felt like, you know, there were a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation online saying, oh, you need to go buy this like financial modeling boot camp that costs a lot of money and it's going to teach you excel and modeling and i was almost going to do that and then i realized that wait actually in these interviews you have no need for any of that and that's kind of skills that you would learn afterwards in preparation for your internship so mm -hmm. I decided to um, join to be able to kind of get access to those modules that really synthesize what you need to know in a, in a time efficient way, because yeah. I also had a lot of classes and extracurriculars and other things that I was trying to juggle in preparation for recruiting as well. And so that was really helpful to be able to efficiently hit what I needed to um, and be able to also kind of skip through modules and access different things, depending on what was coming up, whether that was an interview that was only going to address, you know, a small section of something or, you know, things that just came up here and there. Yeah. Um, and then also the Slack channel, I think was huge. Obviously my mentors, um, you know, they've, they've gone through the process, but like you mentioned, it moves earlier and earlier every year. And so being able to be in a Slack group with kids who are going through the process at the same time as you are, and who are able to give that more like time updated information was really helpful. Um, and so I think for, through that, I like was able to know when a lot of applications were dropping, you know, when they were closing and like when I needed to apply um, and I could also ask people, you know, what interview questions they had to be able to better understand, you know, what I needed to know going into a certain bank's process. And I think that was really helpful for me and was kind of building in a community aspect, um, yeah. that, that part of the program. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. So basically like if I were to kind of recap what you're saying, it's like, um, obviously you had some help from school, which a lot of people, uh, have that already but then it's like it sounds like your mentality is like one obviously you don't want to be the annoying person that's bothering your friends about like every little question you have and throughout recruiting there's just like so many little things that you want to make sure you're getting right you don't want to make like silly little mistakes but mm -hmm. it's almost like you, you don't want to be that 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 girl who's like just like pestering them all the time and like it's not there basically it's not like any help that they provide you is just them being a good friend but it's also not like their job or their responsibility to help you get a job and so like you have to like strike that balance basically and then like more importantly it sounds like your mentality is just kind of like yeah i have some help already but when it comes to something this important like something as important as your career like there's no such thing as having too much help basically right. mm -hmm. um, and so the basically the two things aren't mutually exclusive and if anything it's like you can stack the help you're getting from wall street mastermind on top of the help that you already have from your mentors at school and then that's just only going to make you an even better candidate and also i think the last point you made which is kind of nuanced but i think really important for people too is that um one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize, because you talked about how you have so many things to juggle, right? You're still a full-time student. You're still doing all these other things. Um, I actually think that's like the biggest 
challenge for most people when it comes to recruiting. Like it's mm -hmm. not because any individual thing that you have to do during recruiting is like rocket science, but it's the fact that you have to stack all of these things on top of each other and fit them onto your schedule. Like you, you're a full-time student, you're trying to keep your grades up, which is for most people a full-time occupation in and of itself. But then on top of that, you got to network with, you know, hundreds of bankers. You got to like study for your behavioral, study for your technicals. You got to do internships, build up your resume. Um, mm -hmm. And this is all before we even get to like just being a college student and having a social life and whatever. And so like, where most people struggle or where most people fail that, that we see is that they run out of time, meaning they're not able to do all these things. They're not able to check all these boxes before the, the, the time is up because there is a recruiting deadline of sorts, right? Or um, they're rushing to get it all done before the deadline. And because of that, they kind of have to like rush through certain things or make trade-offs, meaning like, for example, a lot of people will say, I'm going to spend like all my time studying technical, uh, studying for technical interviews. Cause like, I don't know how to answer these questions. Um, but that means I don't have any time to prep for my behaviorals. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to like skip that because I think like that's probably easier. And then in the end, it ends up being like that. Yeah. They know all their technicals, but then their behavioral answers are actually quite poor. And then that prevents them from getting the offer. Right. So like, ideally you want to, not have to make those trade-offs and be able to do everything you need to do in the amount of time that you have, which is not a lot because again, the timeline keeps moving up earlier. And also like, you know, going back to the point about not never, like there's no such thing as having too much help. I think that one thing that a lot of people don't realize too, is like the, the earlier, the earlier on in the process, you can secure the offer. Typically like the better the offer is going to be right? right. Like we're sitting here in April and you're already done with recruiting I would say right now, if we look at like um, the students in your year who are already have at least one offer, it's probably like one out of three people, right? So you're in like the top third in terms of like, you know, uh, time to offer. And the way we think about it is like, you can almost cut recruiting up into like maybe like three parts of the timeline where like elite boutiques, and some bulge bracket banks too, but like elite boutiques as a whole will finish recruiting by the end of sophomore year. And in bulge bracket banks, some will finish by the end of sophomore year. Some will like recruit a little bit longer and finish by the end of sophomore summer. And then like, if you're still recruiting going to junior year, then you pretty much only left with like middle market options. And if you're still recruiting going to like the second half of junior year, which is when we used to recruit back in my days, um, at that point, you're like only left with like probably regional boutiques, like I said, right? And so it's like, there is a core, direct correlation uh, between like how quickly you can get the offer and like typically how good the offer is going to be, right? And so like, that's the other thing is like, yeah, you might be, you, I, I, I'm not, I think you're a hard worker and you're smart, obviously. And I would never sit here and say like, oh yeah, Samantha would, would have never gotten an offer on her own without Wall Street Mashmore. Like we don't know what would have happened in this like alternate universe. Right. But I can be very confident in saying that um, it would have taken you longer mm -hmm. um, even if you did get the offer and be because you will have to do more trial and error. You will have to like make more mistakes along the way. Right. You, you wouldn't have like, you wouldn't be able to leverage the experience of, you know, the hundreds of students that have already gone before you and like, being able to avoid that mistakes that maybe they made or whatever. And like just the process of having to iterate through all of that mm -hmm. would have taken you longer. Right. Even if you like, even if you put in the same amount of effort, like I'm, this, I'm obviously assuming like, Hey, you're going to work just as hard in either scenario, but like, and by taking longer then usually that means you end up getting a worse offer or worst case scenario, no offer. Right. right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and so I think that's like, honestly, one of the biggest things is like, everyone that's listening to this too, like you guys are obviously super busy students. And so like, you got to think about like, you know, how much time do you have right now in a day? Like if you really look at your schedule and you really audit what you're spending your time on, like how much time do you have in a day or in a week to spend on recruiting? And like, is that enough time based on where you're currently at in your recruiting timeline? Right? Like if you're a sophomore, um, I mean, summer 2024 recruiting is happening as we speak. So like, you really don't have much time if at all. Right. Um, if you're a freshman, I would say like, 
you know, most of the applications are probably going to open up for summer 2025 by the end of this year, before the end of this calendar year. So like maybe you have the next, let's call it eight months or so to get ready. And so you got to think about like, okay, if you plan this out, like, what do you still have to do? Like, do you have enough relevant experience on your resume? If you don't, you got to allocate time for that, right? Have you done enough networking? Are you doing the interview prep? Mm -hmm. Do you need to raise your GPA? Like map out all the things you need to do and how much time it's going to take to do those things. And then like figure out like, Hey, do I have enough time to do it? And like the earlier you start, the better, but also like, if you feel like you might struggle with that, or you don't have enough time, then that's when you need to get help. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, um, just one or two more questions for you, but, um, mm -hmm. In terms of like going through the actual um, program, because I think like one thing that's really hard for people or like really hard for people to visualize or um, people who haven't gone to the program or a question that we get a lot is just like, you know, what was like, what, what was the most impactful thing? It could be one thing or a couple things, but like, what, what was the most impactful thing that for you that you did in the program or like, if I put it another way, like, was there um, something that you feel like, you know, if you had done this on your own, you wouldn't have been able to do it to the degree that you did it mm -hmm. with the help that you got in the program? Because I think like the question that, you know, a lot of people want answers to is like, hey, like, isn't, isn't all the information out there already, right? Like, if like, what, what are they going to teach me that I couldn't have just figured out on my own? Like, well, why can't I just I don't know, Google everything or just go like watch a bunch of YouTube videos, right? Like what, what would you say to that? Like, was there anything that where you're like, Hey, I know after having gone through the process now, like what we did here was better than what I could have done on my own. Yeah. And so, I think, like, why? Yeah. I think to answer the first part of the question about, um, you know, what the program really looks like, I would separate it into three buckets. You have the modules um, which kind of give guidance on the networking process, behaviorals and technicals, and pretty much everything in between that you can, would potentially need to know. Um, it's incredibly comprehensive, and you can kind of sift through it, like I mentioned, to find any little thing you need and when things come up. Um, and then I would say the Slack channel, which is separated into different, um, you know, components based on, you know, whether it's understanding interview questions that could potentially come up or technical questions that people have gotten or things that they're wondering based on, you know, their different classes or whatever questions they're experiencing in their own processes. Um, and then behavioral questions as well. And then your individual Slack channel with Sam and with other uh, Wall Street Mastermind coaches, which is more of a direct pipeline in which you can kind of post anything you need to know individually um, and get immediate kind of advice there. And so I think those three things, you know, together, are pretty much the, the full package, you wouldn't need any other financial modeling or any other course on top of that um, and that was really helpful to me in the process especially when it comes to like time efficiency on top of classes being able to know okay these are the only modules I really need to know in order to be able to approach my interviews successfully and and uh, you know these are going to take xyz amount of hours and that's how I'm going to block it into my already busy schedule um, in terms of things that like the highlight of the program what I thought was most helpful um, you know it's hard to pick one because I think it all works together um, to kind of create success for for students but but I would say that the interview question database is amazing. Um, you know, if I were to just be Googling on Glassdoor or on Wall Street Oasis, what questions I could potentially get in an interview, I would not really have as much luck as being able to literally go into a spreadsheet in which all past Wall Street Mastermind students have entered the questions that they've gotten in first rounds and super days. And, you know, they identify what firm, what round it was for, what group. And that was really helpful to me because, you know, if I have an exam and then, you know, an interview is coming up the next week and I need to know quickly what exactly I'm going to be asked obviously it's not perfectly um you know accurate but being able to get a sense there and you know kind of hone my preparation um, was really helpful to me and i think that was also really helpful for higher views as well um sam was able to you know um help with identifying what higher view questions potentially could be which was really helpful as well in, in saving time so yeah 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 so i think um basically if i were to kind of paraphrase that it's really about like um leveraging the community and leveraging the the students that have come before you and their experience mm -hmm. to gain like an information edge basically like totally. yeah. like like getting quicker and easier access to <clears throat> whether it's past interview questions or like earlier you mentioned knowing like 
where different firms are at and their recruiting processes and timeline, that's an information edge as well, because it helps you allocate your time better in terms of like, okay, like this firm is done. I'm going to like stop allocating networking uh, efforts and uh, you or, or spending time networking with people there. Like, but th th this is all like, these are all examples of like having an information edge or even like knowing what higher view questions you're going to get in advance so that you can be more prepared instead of having to like impromptu everything on the spot. Um, yeah. That, that's actually, I mean, actually we, we just gave two or three different examples of stuff that you wouldn't be able to find online. Right. And so like, I think this, to your point, this, um, it's a myth. It's like oh, everything you, you need is already on Google. It's like, it's, it's actually not. And then I would say, I would add to that too. It's like a lot of times, like the challenge of using Google and YouTube, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe for most things, if you search hard enough, you'd probably find an answer somewhere. But the problem is like, one, you have to know what to search for. Like you have to know what questions to ask. Like what, what are you going to type in to the search engine? Do you even like, and sometimes you don't even know what questions you have. Right. Um, <laughs> and so that's the other thing is that like, as a beginner, a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. So you don't even know how to ask the right questions. Um, and like the other part of like being a part of this community and in these Slack channels, like you mentioned is like, a lot of times you don't have to generate your own questions because you get to see all the questions that other people are asking too, mm -hmm. right? And then like a lot of times when someone else has a question, it's like, oh wait, I have the same questions. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you would have never thought of that question on your own and you would have never even gone and, you know, performed a search on it, right? Um, right. And then the second thing is just like, well, even once you search for something, sometimes we've all had this experience, like sometimes you get really good search results and then sometimes you don't right <laughs> or sometimes like you, you you type in a search and then you're like uh click through like the first 10 links and you read all of them and you're like i still don't know what the right answer is or they all say different things or like i read it and i'm still confused um and then like so that's not very helpful to uh either right and, and so that's where like having someone who can like actually help you with that is really, really helpful um i know we're running up on um short on time and so like one last question for you which is just like if now that you've been through the process and you've come out the other side and you, you were very successful with it, do you have like one piece of advice that um, you want to kind of pass down to other people who are, maybe are still going through the process or about to go through the process in the future? Like what's like the one piece of most valuable advice that you've ever received from someone else or that you can share with other people? Yeah, I think um, the first thing I would say is like staying true to yourself and understanding what really makes you unique and, and what has gotten you to the point where you are today. Because a lot of times, you know, I found myself initially moving away from those things, um, you know, my hobbies or interests or um, different unique experiences that might not be in the traditional finance space. But those things really help you stand out and help you have great conversations and, and great networking calls as well. And I think the second thing would be just talking to as many people as possible. And that was something that the Wall Street Mastermind community really helped me do, you know, through that slack channel as well like we mentioned but i think that just talking to people and gathering you know stories about their different experiences really helps you understand what you want and so even when you're not asking like you know specific questions like oh do i want an elite boutique or a bulge bracket or like what sort of experience do i want what locations do i want just having those conversations will help you come to those conclusions on your own um, with time and so you know even i think building those those relationships with people before you need something is is really helpful and then following sam's process obviously later on can help you kind of capitalize on that but I think just building those organic network um, networking connections in, in a genuine way is really helpful and will serve you kind of even after the recruiting process is done you know now that I'm on the other end of it I'm like wow I have all these people that I've been able to connect with uh, within the space who are awesome and, and people who will continue to help me as I move forward in my journey because you know banking is not the end all be all there's stuff beyond it you know there's stuff advice you need during you know your banking experience and so it's great to have connections moving forward for sure for sure that's awesome um, okay, cool. So uh, I think guys, for those of you that are still um, listening, like, you know, I think Samantha shared a ton of really great advice um, throughout this interview. So hopefully you guys found that to be helpful. Um, but, you know, if you're listening to this and, you know, maybe you also come from a non-target school, maybe you also, you know, understand the urgency, um, you know, in this process and just how early everything starts, uh, and maybe, you know, you currently have a little bit of help around you, or maybe you don't have a lot of help either way, but you understand that there's no such thing as having too much help. And you just want to, you know, set yourself up to be able to navigate through the recruiting process in the most efficient way possible so that you can get the best outcome. Um, then I want to encourage you to uh, reach out to our team. Um, and, uh, you know, typically the way it works is, uh, you do have to apply, um, to be a part of the program, but, 
uh, we'll get on a call with you and uh, talk to you about your current situation. And you're going to tell us kind of like what your goals are, um, what you feel like you need help with. And depending on what those things are, um, we will make an assessment on if or how we might be able to help you. And if we do feel like we are confident in our ability to help you, then we'll lay out a customized game plan for you uh, on what we think you need to do to get from where you are today to where you're trying to go, right? And if we don't feel like we're the best fit to help you, we'll obviously also let you know that as well. Um, but in that case, we'll, at a minimum, we'll try to give you some advice on what we think you could do um, or what we would do if we were in your shoes um, so that you can just go out and you know do it on your own. So um, either way, if that's something that you guys are interested in, feel free to go to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. Uh, the street is abbreviated to ST. So it's wall ST mastermind.com slash apply. And uh, we look forward to talking to you. All right. So with that said, Samantha, I want to thank you again for uh, taking the time to uh, talk with us today and uh, just share your experience with the recruiting process. I want to congratulate you again on uh, a very successful outcome. And obviously landing up at a bulk bracket bank is no easy fee. And it's, that's what, you know, most people are, are trying to do. Right. And so I'm definitely very proud of uh, everything you've accomplished and uh, just want to thank you for letting us play a small part uh, in your process. So thank you so much, Sam. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And thank you for having me today as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, um, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back with more of these for you guys in your future. All right. Until next time.